Hi, this is Dusty from Denison MTS, and today I just want to give you a quick walkthrough of some of the laptop cables that you'll see in our e-classrooms and teaching auditoriums. So let's start with what I like to call the legacy connections. The first one, and probably the most common since it's been around since the late 1980s, is VGA, which stands for Video Graphics Array. Now, VGA is the only connection that we have in e-classrooms that is truly analog through and through. Now, technically, VGA can handle resolutions of up to 1080, but at some point they start to degrade a little bit. And since it's an analog connection, you have more possibility for signal degradation as well as interference. You'll notice that in the VGA connection, you have three rows of pins. If one of those pins gets bent or broken or just worn out, that's when you could also start seeing some other signal degradation and image issues on your display from everything from wavy lines to even an entire color missing from your display image. You'll also notice that our VGA plugs in e-classrooms also have what looks like a little headphone jack. This is a 3.5 millimeter, otherwise known as an eighth inch audio jack. That's because VGA doesn't natively carry audio. You need to have this plugged into the headphone output of your device as well. The other legacy connection that we have in e-classrooms and some teaching auditoriums would be DVI. Now, this isn't as common across campus. It is the earliest digital connection that we have in some of our e-classrooms and labs. There's several different uh, versions of DVI, but same thing, they don't carry audio. So you'll want to make sure you use that 3.5 millimeter jack to go along with your display output to your headphone output to get audio into the system. The next connection, which is probably the most popular digital connection due to it being used so much in consumer devices like Blu-ray players and gaming consoles and HD TVs, would be HDMI. Now, HDMI carries both audio and video, and depending on what generation it's in, it could carry 4K display resolutions at 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second, but everything here on campus is going to at least carry 1080p. So again, this will carry audio and video down the line. Make sure you check your audio preferences, whether you're using Mac or PC, to make sure it's going down the HDMI line. Our next connection type would be DisplayPort. So much like HDMI, DisplayPort kind of has its own protocols and has different generations and things that give it different capabilities. But since it's used mostly on PCs and it isn't the most widely used digital connection, at least here on campus, we typically offer some kind of dongle for DisplayPort. So either you'll have DisplayPort to VGA like I'm holding now, or it'll be DisplayPort to HDMI. If you're using DisplayPort to HDMI, you can send audio and video down the same cable. If it goes to VGA, you're gonna to wanna to look for that 3.5 millimeter headphone jack too because once we pump it out to VGA, it no longer carries the audio. You gotta bring that in separately. The next connection type is still in the DisplayPort family, but it is Mini DisplayPort. Now Mini DisplayPort, much like its larger DisplayPort brother, is still going to carry HD signals and, and different audio preferences depending on what generation of cable it is. Obviously here on campus we try to standardize it a bit so you're going to be able to handle at least 1080p down these lines. Now some people might look at this and recognize it more as being what's a, called a Thunderbolt 2 port. Now Thunderbolt 2 is a protocol that was created by Apple and Intel, and so you're probably really used to seeing them on 2017 and older MacBooks and MacBook Airs, as well as some iMacs before 2017, 2018. Still comes down this cable for our classrooms for all intents and purposes, but Mini DisplayPort is abbreviated as MDP. If somebody calls it a Thunderbolt 2 adapter, that's totally fine for our on-campus e-classroom purposes. But again, audio and video could go down the same line. HD signals, don't forget to check your audio preferences. 
the last one, the newest one from the bunch, is going to be USB-C. Now, USB-C can be kind of tricky because USB-C is really just a connection type. You could go to the store and buy a USB-C cable that all it does is transfer data. You could buy one that is a charger for your smartphone. But we also have different alt modes built into certain devices, which means that a USB-C cable, if it's built properly, could be running things like a DisplayPort alternate mode or an HDMI alternate mode, or maybe it's full featured and it does data, it does video, it does power. It all depends on the cable that you buy, so make sure you take a look at that. And it also depends on your devices. So if your computer supports display out through USB-C, you're in good shape to be plugging it into one of these cables in the classroom. But if your computer only supports data out of that port, or maybe it only supports power out of that port. That's something you're gonna to wanna to look at your computer information booklets and about this PC or about this Mac on your machine. Now, in the case of Denison issued machines from ITS, you're going to see a lot of newer MacBook Pros that are USB-C only. A lot of the HP Elite X2s are going to have USB-C only. The cables that we use in our e-classrooms are gonna be fine for either of those. And again, it's going to give, your, give you HD video. It's also going to give you digital audio. So very much like you plugged in your mini display port or your HDMI or whatever, you're still going to wanna to look at those same system preferences to make sure that you're sending audio and video down the same line. Now when it comes to digital connection, obviously these things, these protocols, these generations are always on the move. We do our best to try to standardize it here across campus to make sure it's as seamless as possible. But for the classroom, you should know that the cables that we have in there are gonna work really great with your Denison machines. As always, if you have any questions, please contact the ITS Help Desk.